I'm Monica Morrow, Chief of the Breast Service at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center and Professor of Surgery. And at BCIGCC this year, I was also speaking about management of the HER2 positive patient. So we know that HER2 positive breast cancer is extremely responsive to the combination of chemotherapy and dual HER2 blockade with trastuzumab and pertuzumab. So how can we leverage this to benefit patients in terms of local therapy? We have known for many years that the use of neoadjuvant therapy can render inoperable disease operable, and that's very true for HER2 positive patients. But in addition to that, neoadjuvant therapy allows us to downstage patients to breast conservation who would require mastectomy if they were operated on initially. And in the overview analysis, it suggested that the administration of neoadjuvant therapy would reduce the need for mastectomy by about 15%, which is something, but is really not a particularly impressive amount. Now, the overview analysis potentially underestimates the benefit of chemotherapy because patients were randomized into that study who were already eligible for breast conservation, so they had no ability to benefit from the chemotherapy in terms of their surgical procedure. So if we look at only patients who would require mastectomy if they underwent initial surgery, in first-generation trials from the NSABP and the EORTC, about a quarter of patients were downstaged. More recently, in studies from the CALGB, looking at HER2-positive patients in particular, somewhere around 37 to 50% of patients could be downstaged to breast conservation. Now, not all contraindications to breast conservation are changed with chemotherapy, and so really the ideal candidate for downstaging is a woman with a large tumor relative to the size of her breast. Calcifications in general don't go away, and when we look at patients with large tumor to breast ratios, as we did recently in a study here at Memorial, we found that we could render about 80% of those eligible for breast conservation. So how do we evaluate these patients? Well, at the time of presentation, we do a mammogram, an ultrasound, and an MRI, and then repeat those tests after they have completed chemotherapy. If the patient has had a clinical and a radiographic complete response, the best possible situation, we do a generous lumpectomy at the CLIP site. Otherwise, we excise any residual radiographic abnormality and anything that's abnormal to feel. But a key point about doing lumpectomy after neoadjuvant therapy is that you do not need to remove the entire volume of breast tissue that was originally occupied by the tumor. The whole point of doing the neoadjuvant therapy is to allow you to do a smaller lumpectomy, which allows more women to have a cosmetically acceptable lumpectomy. So this approach should definitely be considered in any patient where you know they're going to get chemotherapy anyway, which in the case of HER2 overexpressing patients means anyone with positive nodes, anyone with a tumor bigger than two centimeters. For patients who have tumors between one and two centimeters in size, this is a sort of gray area and we decide this on a case by case basis. Although the demonstration in the Catherine trial that the receipt of TDM1 in those who do not have a complete response to neoadjuvant therapy improves disease-free survival is a very compelling argument for treating those patients with neoadjuvant therapy. And the only group we really do not favor neoadjuvant therapy in are HER2 overexpressing tumors that are less than a centimeter in size, where we like to see the exact size of the tumor and know the initial nodal status to determine the chemotherapy backbone. Thank you. Mm -hmm.